Hello, and welcome to this introduction to Teravion Learning the Basics webinar. During this webinar, we'll do a brief introduction of who Teravion is as a company. We'll discuss our product offerings and specs, and then we'll move into an in-app demonstration of our overview desktop interface. So let's get started. Who is Teravion? Teravion is the largest volume subscription aerial imagery provider for agriculture in the US. In 2018, we are flying over 1 million unique acres about four times the amount of our nearest competitor. We fly manned aircraft, and we operate in a space between drones and satellites. Drones offer high resolution imagery, but an, an average cost of $50 per acre for a single image is over 150 times the cost per acre per image with Teravion. Satellites are cheaper, but Teravion imagery is over 20 times the resolution of the best satellite imagery on the market. Satellite Im imagery simply does not provide enough utility to growers to make it worth the investment. Teravion offers high value and commodity crop subscription packages that range from 15 to 28 weekly and bi-weekly image deliveries over the course of a season. Image deliveries includes a package of an RGB or natural color image, a thermal image, an infrared image, and an NDVI or vegetation index image. Teravion leads the industry with an 11.2 hour imagery turnover time from the time your imagery is captured until it's delivered to your account. Imagery data is time sensitive, and Teravion's quick turnover time provides growers with real-time data on the current conditions of their fields, allowing them to make decisions based on what is happening in their fields right now. Now let's move into some product specs. The first imagery type we'll talk about is our natural color or RGB imagery. Our natural color or RGB imagery is 18 to 22 centimeters per pixel resolution, and this is the same kind of image you would take with your camera or what your eye would see from a plane. Um, natural color imagery can be used to spot plant growth variability, but it's also really valuable as a reference for multispectral and or thermal imagery. RGB images are really hard to process, and for this reason, most imagery companies do not include them in their offerings. The next image type is our thermal imagery, and our thermal imagery is two meters per pixel in resolution. And thermal images show variation in temperature across uh, any given field. And thermal imagery is a really great tool for managing irrigation systems and for detecting soil moisture. Our infrared imagery is also 18 to 22 centimeters per pixel in resolution. And uh, ND, or, um, infrared imagery is really good for detecting uh, plant biomass, leaf biomass. And our NDVI imagery, uh, normalized difference vegetation index is also 18 to 22 centimeters per pixel. And NDVI is a remote sensing index used to detect plant vigor and stress, leaf area and biomass. And NDVI imagery is basically a combination of our RGB or natural color imagery and our infrared imagery. The red band in the RGB imagery correlates to photosynthetic activity in plants. This combined with infrared imagery provides growers with a very accurate visual representation of the health of their fields. So more information on the NDVI imagery. And NDVI is a uh, numerical data that we collect and then we project on a grayscale and you get an image like this. And what we do then is we apply a color scale such as this over top of that and that creates um, the illustrations that we'll be looking at later. And you can see that here. So these are two NDVI images, and they're actually the same field, same exact field, and it's the same exact data. And what we've done is we've applied our color maps. Um, the, again, these images were originally uh, black and white scale, gray scale, and we've applied our color maps over top of them. And what we've done is for this image, we've applied our color map, and it's just a standard color map, and that's giving you this, providing you with this illustration here. And then for, this image, what we've actually done is we've taken that scale and we've compressed it to fit in just um, this area here where the NDVI data is contained for this image on this date. So we, we've gone ahead and we've manipulated this scale here. So it just, so we take it and we squeeze it to this area. And again, what that does is it, on this scale here, where you have a bigger block of color that's representing a certain range, NDVI range. In this scale, you will have multiple blocks of colors representing the same range. And what that does is it brings out more detail in your imagery like this. 
this this type of NDVI imagery is called our standard NDVI, um, and this is a tool you want to use if you're looking at temporal changes over the course of a season for a field, or if you're looking at the farm level and you want to see field health at the farm level, you want a standard scale like this. If you're looking at an imagery single field just like this, and you see some variation here, and you want to see it in more detail, you use what we call our dynamic uh, NDVI or bigger map. And you'll get an image like this because, again, the scale will be focused in that area and it'll be pulling out more detail. And you'll get an image such as this. We see our growers using um, our imagery in basically four different ways, um, general categories. Um, the first is uh, issue detection. So um, using it to you review your imagery and you, you look for any uh, signs of uh, uh, plant growth variability, vigor variability. And um, a lot of times that correlates to, if you're looking for areas of plant stress, it can correlate to uh, irrigation issues, pest issues, disease issues, soil issues, fertility issues, et cetera. So you're reviewing your imagery and you're looking for things that stand out, such as this, um, that you're going to want to go and do an in-field inspection of. And that leads us to our next um, category here, which is scouting and sampling. So you would take an image like this and you can place your pins and markers. Oops. Um, which you can then use the mobile app to walk into the field in the GPS feature and go right to those points and scout the images or uh, scout the issues here. And then you can take notes in your mobile app and um, take a picture and then you can log that and the mobile app and the desktop app um, can talk to each other. So any notes that you make in the mobile app will be can be seen in the desktop app and vice versa. Um, the next way we see growers using it is um, to guide in season actions. So depending on what they find um, in their scouting efforts, if uh, in this case here there is an aphid infestation, um, they can use the imagery to guide um, some sort of remedial action. So say they want to make a pesticide treatment here and they want to do a targeted treatment, they can use the imagery um, to make target this area right here. Or if they want to do a variable rate, they can make um, a zoning map like this, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. Um, to uh, make a variable rate prescription off of. And then the last way we see our users using our imagery is um, to evaluate product performance. So for instance, if a grower is growing um, two different hybrids in certain fields or different plots, or if he made some sort of in-season application, he wants to evaluate the effectiveness of it, he can use uh, certain in-app tools that we can discuss later um, to kind of measure both of um, those areas or both of those zones and use the NDVI data to compare um, their performance. Now let's move to the in-app demonstration of our overview desktop interface. To log into our overview desktop interface, you'll just go to maps.terravion.com and you'll enter your email and password here. Um, if you are not a customer with us, you can sign up here. Um, if you are part of an organization that has imagery, um, and you don't have access to that, you can have them um, share the imagery with you, in which case you'll get an email um, asking you to um, sign up. Um, and then when you log in, you'll have access to that imagery. Um, once you log into your uh, overview account, this is what you'll see. This is our uh, overview desktop interface. And the first thing to know over here is our field index. And um, what you have basically is you have a list of your farms here. Um, and if you open up one of the farms, you have all the fields um, under that farm. Now, if you have um, your, you have the ability to share any of this imagery, uh, like I, I mentioned a moment ago, and what you do basically is you just click on this button here, and you enter the email that you want to share it with. You can edit their permissions where um, they're only allowed to view it or they're allowed to view it and share it with someone else. And you just want to make care, be careful um, you're aware of what you're actually sharing. So if I want to share this farm, I can share the whole farm here. Um, if I only want to share the field, I just want to click the share button next to that field. So you can see here, we've just pulled up this hail damage field here, this soybean field. And uh, what you have here basically is the uh, farm name and the field name. You have the date and the time the image was captured. And then right here, you have your timeline. So each one of these blocks represents an image delivery. So each time your field was flown and you have um, um, uh, image delivered, imagery delivered to your account, you'll get one of these boxes here. 
you can kind of click through. So, you know, you can click through it. You can also use this tool right here to um, arrow through the imagery. And then you can actually uh, play a slideshow if you're looking um, for kind of a summary of your field. You can use the slideshow and it kind of gives you a little um, illustration of, uh, of your field of how it's progressing throughout the season, which is kind of a cool tool. Um, down here we have uh, our map layer menu. And at the top you have uh, your color imagery. So this is your natural color, your RGB imagery. You have your infrared imagery. You have your thermal imagery. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, you have, excuse me, your uh, NDVI, or we call it Vigor uh, imagery. And I, I mentioned, uh, you know, we have our standard Vigor. And again, this is a, you know, a, a Vigor with a fixed scale here. So this scale, and it's fixed, it's not going to move at all. So if I go ahead and arrow through um, some of my image dates here, you can watch a scale to kind of move to the right. And again, this is a really good tool um, to gauge temporal changes uh, in your field. Um, and it's also a good tool if you're looking at the farm level at multiple fields and you want to kind of you know, compare them to each other, you want to work with the standard figure. The dynamic figure is a really awesome tool and it's really great for uh, pulling out more detail in an image like this. So this image right here is a, it's an early season image and what we have here basically is we have some early immersion stuff here, here, and here. Um, of course, uh, you can zoom in to any of these images with the zoom tools here or with uh, your uh, scroll uh, button on your mouse. So you can zoom in here, right? And uh, so the NDVI imagery for this image, it's a lot of dirt and there's not a lot of vigor var variation. As you can see here, it's all kind of focused right here. This image really isn't showing you much detail. Now, if I were to select the dynamic map, what the dynamic map does, it actually fits this histogram like so. And again, now what we're doing is uh, we've compressed this scale to focus only on the NDVI uh, value range for this particular image on this date. And we've, comp we've compressed the scale here. Um, and you can see how that works basically is if I have this scale opened up all the way, there's only one, two, three, four, five or so big blocks of color. And you can see this color represents a range from 0.25 up to 0.29. And now by compressing this scale down, um, what's happening is um, where these values were in the before in the prior image represented by one big block of scale, now they're represented by multiple, three or four or five. And again, what that's doing is just bringing more detail out in this image here. Um, you'll notice that um, this is a histogram tool here, of course. And if you click here, it'll open it up. Um, and you'll notice that when I roll my mouse over it, I get these pop-up windows. And what that is basically, um, on the bottom in the black down here, you can see it'll give you the NDVI value. And then on the top, it'll in the box on the top, it'll say um, how many acres are uh, represented by that color. Um, and or fall within that in a, of NDVI value range, and then what percentage of the field that is as well. And over here, you also have a, a similar breakdown, um, NDVI range, acres, percentage of the field. Right, so we'll X out of this. Um, the next tool I'll show you, layer I'll show you, is um, our NDVI zoning, uh, zone creation tool right here. And if you click on this, what this does basically is it will take this uh, NDVI information here that you have and um, it'll block it off into however many zones you create. So anything from two to six zones here. And so it'll block this NDVI um, data up into zones. So what that does basically is it makes it more actionable. So um, we have a lot of growers, our growers that it do a variable rate um, prescriptions based off of our imagery. And instead of doing it um, off an image like this, they'll actually make a zoning map where, uh, again, this NDVI imagery is broken up into zones. And that, again, makes it more actionable. So for instance, this field here, um, you know, we were looking at it with the net, with the color imagery. And uh, again, what we were seeing was some early emergence and we're gonna say that that was weeds. So you can imagine um, and with this uh, bigger map here, all the green areas are where we have some weeds sprouting up. 
And we want to make a herbicide application, and we only want to do the green zones. We don't want to do anything else. Or we want to do um, nothing for the lower zones because that's going to be dirt. Um, we want to do an application for the middle zones, and then we want to do a higher application for the higher vigor zones. So we'll go ahead in the, our zoning tool here, and we'll close this. And we will say, okay, I want to make a, a zoning map. I want to make it three zones. Um, we're going to put this to user here to make our to customize our zones, and um, and then we can use these buttons here to um, define to to define our the zones. Or you can actually just go up here in this histogram and you can drag in. I think this is the easiest way to do it. Um, so you kind of drag these buttons like this, and now you can see your zones. This is you know where your zones are being created. And what you can do over here, if you go ahead and you turn this on, this will give you a, a kind of a visual representation of the NDVI information that the tool is going to make your zones from. And you can kind of edit this a little bit before you actually um, calculate your zones. All right, so that looks pretty cool. And then we'll go ahead and create our, our zones. Um, before we do that, one other thing to note here is the grid size. So you can actually change uh, the grid size of each of your zones. So um, depending on what you're doing, if you're applying some sort of, um, if you're making some sort of application, and you have an applicator with a 30 foot boom, um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make this grid size 30. Now if we calculate our zones here, um, again, uh, this tool is gonna break up this all this NDVI information to only three zones. And again, uh, the zoning map makes uh, this NDVI information, this NDVI imagery more actionable, uh, easier to, to act on. And, and here we have an example here. Um, and again, you can see your zones. So your zone one is your lower zones. This is your, uh, you know, your bare soil or whatever you define your zone as. And this is in our uh, example of weeds in a herbicide application. We're not going to worry about this uh, red zone here. Um, the green zones are middle zone, so maybe we'll apply some sort of uh, some herbicide rate, a lower herbicide rate to this area, and then the blue zone is our really high vigor, and that's where we're really going to apply that higher uh, rate of um, herbicide there. We also have a tool that'll uh, filter out these minimum region zones here, so you can set the minimum region zone uh, to a certain uh, size, and it'll filter out all these little uh, dots here that um, we're not really interested in acting on, and it'll make our uh, actionable zones uh, more clear. Um, you can then click Next, and you can export this uh, zoning map that you've made as a shapefile. Um, and you can click this button here to include uh, the NDVI data to that, to attach it. Then you can upload that uh, NDVI zoning shapefile into just about any uh, Precision Ag platform, um, and then include that as a layer in your uh, variable rate prescription. And our growers are finding this really valuable because, again, um, you're getting imagery delivered um, 11.2 hours after it was taken. Um, so you're getting a, a real-time rep representation about what's happening in your field. Um, and by acting on that, you can be much more efficient with your resources and directing them um, where they're going to be most effective at this particular time um, compared to, to basing a prescription off of a um, yield data map from the previous season, um, which, again, is not a good indicator of what's happening in your field currently. Another way we see uh, our growers using the zoning tool is for um, sampling. So in other words, uh, we'd have growers and they would go into uh, these different zones and they'd go into the blue zone and they'd take a few different samples here and average them together and then kind of project it across the whole field by using this number here. So zone three um, is 47.91 acres. So whatever my um, average sample result here, um, I could say that uh, 47.91 acres of the field correlates to those results. And of course, we do the same in uh, the green zone here in the middle zone and the low red zone as well. Um, so that's another way that we see uh, growers using the zoning tool. And on the top of, of scouting and sampling, we X this out. Um, with the new mobile app, you'll have the ability to go in here and place a pin um, in any of these zones uh, that you want to um, scout. And you, you place it in the desktop app here. And then the pin will talk to the mobile app. Um, and you can use the mobile app to, in the GPS feature, to navigate to your pin. And um, at that pin, you can take um, notes, um, what you're finding, what you're seeing. You can take a picture. Um, and then any notes or information that you log in the mobile app 
will be seen in the desktop app and vice versa. Um, we can also use this polygon tool here to draw an area. So if we draw this area, this is an area we're interested in. And then if we click the last, the first button that we place, we'll click that and it'll open the label catalog window here. And at the top, you have uh, the total field acres. You have um, the labeled acres here. So this whole area is 7.31 acres. And um, what you can do then is you can make any sort of notes that you have here. Um, you can log them here and I'll log it with who wrote the note and the date. You can share this label and um, anyone that you share this with um, will have access to the label and um, they can make their notes as well. And all the notes will be logged here and photos and any other sort of data that you're collecting can be logged here. Um, and it's a, just a good place to uh, centralize communication and data um, when you're um, working with uh, different people um, for uh, a particular field. You can keep watching. So this, this label that you've made here um, will automatically be watching. So if I X this out and clear, so this label will still be here. And to get back into the labeling catalog, I click this button here. And now if I go to watching and I can find um, my label right here, if I click on it and you know, any of the notes that I made will be brought up there. Um, if I, if I just leave it, keep it watching as it is, um, it will stay there as I change through the dates, it'll stay there. So you can kind of track, um, and watch how it's performing as the season progresses and, you know, keep making notes, uh, week to week. Um, you can also, um, archive the note here. Um, and then if you can, you know, you can put a cause or an issue, your action you've taken, um, you can click it as resolved. And then when you X out of here, your, um, your label will be logged here. And then of course you can actually just delete it entirely with this trash can button here and then I'll just delete it. Um, you can see here that this particular label is still on now. Um, you can turn it off in the labeling queue by pushing this button here. So that's the labeling tool. Um, you can use this button here, the draw a line tool, um, to measure distance. So in other words, if you're at um, a service road here and you want to measure the distance from to the to a certain point, you just click and click again, and now you have you know 1,412 feet from here to here. So this is kind of a convenient tool. So we're going to start wrapping up our demonstration here. A um, couple last things I want to show you. First would be the summary view tool. Summary view tool, as the name states, is um, a way to see basically um, a summary of uh, your field throughout the season. This is a really great tool for um, end of season um, kind of analysis. And if you click this button up here, you'll see the histogram. And what this does basically is it shows you the natural color, the infrared, the vigor, and the thermal imagery um, from the same image date lined up next to each other. So it kind of gives you all the context layers here so you can kind of get a more comprehensive um, understanding of what you're seeing. And if you uh, use your arrows, you can click through and you can watch your field um, you know, as it progresses over the course of the season. You can watch the histogram here and you can watch it'll go to the right as the field gets greener. And eventually, of course, it'll start drying down and go the other way. Um, you can also monitor the thermal histogram here as well. Um, you have the ability to download a, uh, a summary, a PDF summary of this. And when you do that, what you'll get basically is for um, each uh, image delivery, you'll have a one, two, three, four uh, image layout like this, and they'll stack on top of each other from um, from each other date. And then you can kind of go down and look at um, you know how the NDVI imagery how it performed throughout the season, or the th thermal imagery how it performed throughout the season. Um, so that's a really good uh, end of season tool, um, end of season field summary tool that you can do. And again, you do that um, here and you just click this button here. Um, you can click here to change which field you want to see a summary for, and here you can see the date. A couple more things before we wrap up. Um, this more menu down here, if you click on the more menu, you can label your field by crop uh, to help organize your fields. You can download a GeoTIFF or the geo multi-band GeoTIFF, and the, doing so, you'll download basically a TIFF file 
of your field for whatever image layer you have selected and on that date. So basically exactly what you see right here, you'll download a, a TIFF file for. Um, you can also go to the statistics table here and the statistics table will give you uh, the NDVI statistical breakdown um, for your image. Um, you can look at um, a larger date range for your uh, imagery here, or you can look at all your fields at once and kind of um, and see all that uh, NDVI data for all of your fields at one time. Um, the last thing on this home on this more menu here would be the uh, report a layer issue. So if you notice anything wrong with uh, any of your imagery, um, use this tool and you know give a brief description of what you see that looks to be off. If you click save, it'll be sent to us and um, the Travion team um, will be assigned to the um, the appropriate member of our team who will handle it in a timely manner. Another way that you can report issues to us is through our chat tool up here. If you click on this and a bunch of our team members are in there and we're always monitoring it. So um, as soon as it comes in, we usually address it pretty immediately and sign it to the appropriate person. So if you want to talk to us, um, this is the best way to do it right through here. Um, you can also email us at support.teravion.com. That concludes this introduction to Teravion webinar. Thanks for watching, and please click the link at the end of the video to watch our second webinar, Teravion Use Cases, where we'll discuss grower case studies that we collected over the 2017 season. We'll discuss how growers have used imagery in a number of different ways to increase profits on your farm and how you can use it to do the same.